welcome to part one of creating the Longmire blanket that will go along with the series that we are watching and discussing on Friday nights during Cup to Hook movie night. And today we're going to get started with creating our Longmire blanket. So before we get started, you needed to have picked out 12 different colors of yarns as indicated in the introduction video last week. And so I am going to show you the 12 colors that I have chosen and I'm going to show you the method that I did in putting my colors together. So to start with, I created a little piece of paper where I wrote down the numbers and the colors that I was going to use. And so let me show you. The first color that I have chosen to represent number one is the color buff. And most of this yarn, in fact, I believe all of this yarn is a Red Heart Super Saver yarn. So here is my buff. And so not only do I have it listed on my card, but I also created a card and just clipped it on here with a plastic little stitch marker. And I put the name of what it was and the number and attached it to the yarn. So that is my first color. The color that is represent representing my second color is minty. And I also put a number two on it. So kind of a little minty green, although it looks very light blue there, but it is a mint green. My third color that I have chosen is cherry red. And again, I put a little marker on there so you can see. And for as many as I could, I actually matched the stitch marker to the color of the yarn, but you don't have to do that. The color I've chosen for color number four is carrot. Even had an orange stitch marker. <laughs> Again, you don't have to do that. The color that I've chosen, and all of this was actually yarn that I already had. I did not go buy any yarn. This is all from my yarn wall, my stash, etc. The fifth color that I've chosen is Patty Green. And I am using leftover yarn from a project. So. Let me slide these up out of the way so I can have room to bring in the next colors. The color that I'm using for number six are also leftovers that I've had from a project. And so it is in the color peach. And I had four small skeins of that left, which is well more than seven ounces, but nonetheless, that is my sixth color. So that is half of my color palette. So let's look at the other half of my color palette. So the color that is representing number seven for me is real teal. And it looks like a it looks like a teal blue in there, but I it, it doesn't seem to be as rich as it actually is. But I hope it shows up on the camera that way. All right. The eighth color, or the color that's representing my eighth color, is going to be bright yellow. The color representing nine for me is black the color representing my tenth color 
is also more scraps that I have. So it's going to be navy blue. And I have these little cakes that I made left of that. And that will definitely be equivalent to seven ounces. The color representing my 11th color is white. And the last color that is representing number 12 for me is also more scraps. And it is purple. And should I not have enough for whatever the luck of the dice rolls for purple, then I'm going to use some more scraps that I have and I'll just incorporate this light purple. But those are my 12 colors. They are not put in any particular order. In fact, I made this something fun for my husband and I, um, just more quality time together. And I had him help me choose the 12 colors off the wall. And then after he and I chose the 12 colors, then as I put the numbers on those little cards that you see on the actual yarn itself, I wrote number 11 and then I told him just pick a color. So he randomly just picked up a color and gave it to me and that automatically became whatever number, you know, I was on. And so that's how the numbers or the yarn colors got chose or matched or paired with the numbers. So it was no methodical method. It was no, you know, random, you know, thought process put in it. It was just simply pick a color and I'll match it to this number. And thus that became number so-and-so. So now let me pause the video a minute and I'm going to get all the yarn back in the basket. I am keeping all of my yarn for this project in this nice big basket. I hope you can see it there. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And it has nice big straps to carry. And then as you can see, there's pockets along the front here. I can't really get my hands in them. All right. There's pockets along the front here. So I will be able to keep my hook in that, my scissors, and everything that I'm going to need for this project. Lotion. Um, so everything is all together. So when I go to work on it and do our tutorials, that I just have it all right here. All right, so I'm going to take a quick brief moment to put all the yarn back into the bag and then I will come back and we'll get started. The size hook that we're going to be using to create our Longmire blanket is a size six millimeter J hook. And to determine the color that we will use every week and how many rows we're going to use will be determined by the roll of the dice. So that way it keeps it interesting fun, exciting, unpredictable, and so why not get started? So let's go ahead and roll the dice to see what color we are going to use first. Now depending on what color you chose for your numbers will determine what you use. But So let's roll and see and then everybody will use the color that they have put for that number. And so the number that has been rolled for our color is color number eight. So on my card, number eight for me is going to be bright yellow. So I will be starting my blanket with the bright yellow. Now, to determine how many rows of our blanket we are going to do for this week. Now, rows do not necessarily determine the pattern of the stitch or the stitch of the pattern. It will determine just simply how many rows we accomplish week by week. So, so we have rolled the dice and determined what color we're using. Now it's time to roll the dice and determine how many rows we will be doing this week. Now originally when we started talking about rolling the die to determine the color and the amount of rows, we talked about using both dice. 
both dice would, would absolutely be needed to determine which of the 12 colors we're using. However, when it comes to the rows, I've decided that um, we're only going to use one die because in the beginning we talked about the most amount of rows we could do in a week would be 12 and the least amount of rows that we could do in a week would be 2. However, 12 rows, if that should ever be the case, for this size blanket would be a lot of rows to try and accomplish. And not everybody has that kind of time every week, myself included. And then not only, that would really create an extremely wide patch of perhaps maybe one color at times. And so the point of this Indian blanket is for the rows to repeat the color um, as quickly in the changeup in order to create that kind of, you know, Indian look the Navajo look. So we're actually going to remove one die and the amount of rows we do are going to be determined by the roll of only one die. So we would have maybe one row to do or five rows to do. And if it happens to only be one or two rows, then that's great because if we ever get behind, then you'll have time to get caught up. Okay, or if you've got something going on or you're on vacation and you miss a week, you're not so far behind. So, and that will definitely give us plenty of time to finish this over six seasons of Longmire. So with that being said, let's roll the dice and see how many rows we're going to do for this very first week. And guess what? We're doing the max. We are going to do five rows. So let's get started. As we get ready to begin this tutorial and this blanket, I wanted to share that since everyone who is joining us for the Longmire movie night question and answer and creating this blanket may be at different levels of experience when it comes to crocheting. But I want everyone to feel confident and comfortable that they can accomplish this blanket and be a part of this project. So in order to establish and create that level of confidence and being comfortable, there will be a tutorial every week that will introduce every technique that we will do in each of the Fun Day Monday tutorials. So for example, um, every Thing that we will do in today's tutorial has already been introduced in a separate video that you will find under the title you say what I say let's create and so that tutorial will correlate with this fun day Monday episode and next week there will be a tutorial that will correlate with part two of the Longmire blanket tutorial for fun day Monday so that way you have an introduction to everything that will be done in the tutorial ahead of time and an opportunity to practice. But also, as we go along, I won't be necessarily explaining and showing everything in quite precise detail as I would in my normal tutorials simply because I will be doing that in the separate video under the series of, again, you say what, I say let's create. So with that being said, if we're doing something in this tutorial that you don't feel comfortable with or you're not quite grasping, then stop, go look at that video where it's in a lot more detail or actually in a demonstration and then come back and join us. If you fully grasp what is going on, then please feel free to fast forward and get to the next part where you need. All right. So everyone, let's begin the Longmire blanket. So to get started, we do need to create a slip knot on our hook. Again, you want it on there tight enough that it doesn't come off, but loose enough that it can slide. I hope everyone has already lotioned their hands and everything is ready to go. So to get started, we are gonna create a chain of 159. So I need you to go ahead and get started with that. And again, if you need help learning how to do a chain or creating a chain, go check out that special video. 
And for everyone else, I will meet you after you have made a chain of 159. So after you've created your foundation chain of 159, and here's mine, we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin with row one. So let me get my foundation chain situated here. And for row one, we are going to be doing double crochets. So we're going to count four chains in from the hook. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to put our double first double crochet into that first chain from the hook and this is actually going to count as our first double crochet. And then we are going to work a double crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the end of row one, you will actually have a total of 157 double crochets. So go ahead and continue working all the way down the row until you get to the end and I will meet with you there. So we have completed our first row of double crochets and let's just take a look at our blanket so far. And there we go. So now to go into the next row, we are going to chain one and turn our work. And I am going to work my foundation tail in as I go so I don't have to weave it in later but before I do that so that I will be able to keep up with what is the right side of my blanket and what is the wrong side I'm going to turn my work back over so that my hook is on the left side here my foundation tail is on the left side and I'm going to mark my blanket with a stitch marker and I'm going to find somewhere in the middle to do that and I'm going to add a stitch marker so that going forward I will always know what part of my blanket is the front side. So I'm just going to grab a strand of yarn and put my stitch marker on right there so I know that that's my front side. Now I'm going to turn my work back so it's ready to begin the next row. And as we stated, we chained one. And now for row two, we're going to go right into this first stitch and we're going to create a single crochet. And then we're going to just single crochet all the way across the row. And when we get to the end of the row, we will have a total of 157 single crochets. So go ahead and complete row two by working a single crochet into each stitch. So here we are at the end of row two with our single crochets and this is what our blanket 
is starting to look like. All right. And to begin row three, we're going to turn our work. I apologize, I got my yarn twisted here. All right, there we go. Now we're untwisted. And to start row three, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And that is going to count as a treble crochet and our turning chain. So since we have this already in this stitch, we're going to skip that stitch and we're going to wrap our yarn twice and we're going to go right into the next stitch and work our treble crochet. And there we go. And now we're going to work a treble crochet all the way across this row and all the way down to the end and when we get to the end we will have a total of 157 treble crochets all right so go ahead and continue working all the way to the end of the row, working a treble crochet stitch into each stitch across, and I will meet you at the end of row three. We have reached the end of row three, and we have 157 triple crochets at the end of our row. And so this is what our blanket is beginning to look like. So now we're going to turn our work and we're going to begin row four. And to do that, we're going to start with a chain one. This chain one is only counting as our turning chain to heighten our row. So because we're not actually creating enough of a chain to create a first single crochet stitch we're going to go right into this same stitch and we're going to create our single crochet so we only chain one to be our turning chain and that creates our first single crochet and then we are going to do single crochets all the way across row four So go ahead and work a single crochet and each stitch across row four and I will meet up with you at the end of row four when you are finished. We are at the end of row four you should have a total of 157 single crochets and this is what our blanket is beginning to look like. It is really pretty and yours will look the same except depending on whatever color your color was. for your number eight. So let's go ahead and flip our blanket 
and we are going to begin row five, which is our last row for today. We're going to chain three. That chain three is going to count as our turning chain, and it's also going to count as our first double crochet. And since it's going to count as our first double crochet, that means that we are going to skip this space at the base of that stitch, and we're going to work into the very next stitch, and we're going to create double crochets in every stitch all the way across. So go ahead and continue working double crochets all the way across and I will meet you at the end of round, or excuse me, row five. We are at the end of row five and you should have 157 double crochets and this is what our blanket looks like so far. Already have a nice little bit of texture going on here. So this is where we are going to come to a stopping point for this week. But before we do, I want to discuss something with you to help prepare you for next week. So next week we will be dealing with a color change. And depending on what your preference is, will determine how you end this color. Now some people like to Let me pull this last stitch out. When they are actually working on the very last stitch, all right, so after I've completed half of the double crochet and I still have my two loops here left to yarn over and pull through, some like to actually pull through with the new color and do a color change up that way. For me, my preference, and this is my preference, so again you do with what you feel comfortable with, but I like to go ahead and cut off my current color and I like to attach my yarn in a very special way to start the new color. So next week I will show you how I actually attach my color so depending on what your preference is will determine whether you go ahead and trim your edge or your your yarn or not so since I will be changing mine up by attaching it I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine and I'm going to chain one and pull that yarn all the way through and fasten off. All right, and then when it comes to this tail right here, you can either weave it in or you can work it in as you create the new color. So again, you do whatever is comfortable for you. And of course we have our stitch marker that helps us keep up with where our front is and just for purposes of moving up so that it's really visible I'm going to move it up just a little bit higher but that is where it will rest for the remainder of the blanket. So this has been Fun Day Monday part one of the Longmire blanket and I hope that you will stay tuned and join us next week as we begin part two we introduce a new color and continue um, building upon our Longmire blanket. So until then, 
be joyful, stay crafty in your own way, and I hope you have um, everyday joy and that part of that is being able to crochet and make your own joyful creations.